All right, for any surfers out there, you definitely know what an offshore wind is because that's what makes some great waves, especially in the morning. But for anybody who's not a surfer or a scientist or a meteorologist, you might be wondering what's the difference between an onshore and an offshore wind. So we're gonna look at onshore winds first and we're gonna think about this land and this water in the middle of daytime. So let's say it's maybe two or four o'clock in the afternoon. So this sun has just been heating up this land and this water all day long. And if you don't know anything about specific heat, you might intuitively know that land heats up faster than water. If that's not intuitive to you, you can just think about the fact that if you were to put out a glass of water on a hot day, and you were to put out a piece of metal on a hot day, not sure why you have a piece of metal, but you put it out on a hot day, and then you wait two hours, and you put your finger in that water, and it might have increased by a few degrees, might be kind of warm, but then you put your finger to that metal and you burn your finger. And that's because the metal heats up faster than the water does. Well, the same thing happens during the daytime with our land and our water right here. So the land, after heating up all day, is going to be warmer. And our water is going to be colder. So where we have the warm land, that's going to warm up the air slightly above the land. So that's gonna create what you'd call a little low pressure, but you don't really have to worry too much about pressure. You can just think about as that warm land heats up the air above it, it's going to expand, it's going to become less dense, and it's going to rise. Now the opposite is going to be happening over the water. So the water, you're going to get a little high pressure and you're actually going to see some air descending like that. Now, you might be starting to see the little the beginnings of a circulation right here. And even if you didn't know that wind likes to flow from high to low pressure, you could kind of see that if that air over the water is going down, it's gonna bump into that water, it's gonna hit the surface, and then it's going to rush in to where the rising air above the land is almost like pulling it onto the land. And then all of a sudden, you have that wind going from the water on shore, or as you would call it, on shore wind. Now interestingly, this is bad wind for surfing because it just kind of crumbles those waves over, but it is good wind on a very hot day if you're right by the coast, because what this is actually going to do is take some of that colder air that's over the water and push it over the land. And this is actually a big part of the reason that the land closest to the ocean is a lot more moderated in its temperatures. You might have wondered that how Santa Cruz in California is almost 70 degrees every single day of the year, or at least it seems that way. But then you go into the Central Valley, which doesn't have this ocean influence, and in summer it'll be 100, and then during the winter it'll be 50. It's that water that doesn't change heat as rapidly that moderates the coastal temperatures. So that might have been a little too much detail, but that's our onshore winds. So now what we're going to do is we are going to change this to nighttime. And we are going to go up to offshore wind right here. And we're going to think about what's going to happen at night. So just like how land heats up faster than water, it's also going to cool down faster than water. And again, this all has to do with specific heat, but don't really need to worry about that. Just worry about the fact that it's nighttime, land is going to be cooling off very rapidly, so it is going to be colder than the water. We're gonna develop a little high pressure right here, and you're going to get some sinking air. Now, over the water, this is going to be just slightly warmer. It's not going to be as extreme as what we we're seeing during the day, but then you're going to get maybe some rising air and a little low pressure. Now, if we think about what our winds are going to do, that descending air over the land is going to bump into the land, and then it's going to go out towards the water, or it's going to go off shore. Now I've been talking about surfing this entire video, 
But if you think about if we were to draw a wave in right here, that wind is going to hold the wave up longer. And in the best cases, it can actually lead to some barrels and the best kind of surf days. But overall, when it comes to onshore and offshore winds, it really has to do with specific heat, how the land heats up faster and cools down faster, and then what's going to happen as you get descending and rising air. So that's basically the difference between onshore and offshore winds.